everybody welcome back to witch fix today we're looking at something a little bit outside my comfort zone as a reader because it's not about witchcraft per se but it is about santeria as the title would suggest which i'll just be honest right up the top and say it's not something that i'm very familiar with i had to do a teeny bit of googling just to find out if some of the things that i had heard sort of in this comic book its reputations of Santeria were correct or not but other than that I don't know a huge amount about it so forgive me if I get any of the details incorrect. So I'm talking today about Santeria the Goddess Kiss which is a five episode, I feel like episode is the wrong word, issue a uh, graphic novel which was I think collected into one volume. I purchased the five issues separately. It ran from 2016 to 2017 and was written by David Wall and illustrated by Giuseppe Caffaro. Apologies if I pronounced either of those wrong. And it, broadly speaking, covers a, a kind of power struggle between several groups, uh, some associ associated with Santeria and some not. We begin each issue with a look back into the past. I'm going to trigger warm because there is talk of slavery, but also of sexual assault and fairly graphic scenes of murder. Uh, so we begin each issue with this flashback to the past to chart what has happened to the followers of Goddess Una. And I have Googled this and I cannot find that this is an actual entity that is worshipped in Santeria. Take that with a pinch of salt as large as a minibus because obviously Google is not exhaustive. But I couldn't find mention to a particular deity called Una. But in this case, she is the goddess that they worship in this particular tradition. And we see her priestess being taken from Africa and then sold into slavery in Cuba. And through these flashbacks, we get information that she had a child uh, with her already, but then also had another child fathered by a slave owner who she then murdered. And this baby is born out of her flaming remains when she is burned at the stake as a witch. And it is this child who is, I would say, probably the antagonist for the first four issues. Uh, he remains quite uh, an amorphous character who we're not really familiar with. We don't see him a lot. Um, but we get the, the idea that a lot of the evil goings on being faced by our protagonist are being caused by him, whether directly or indirectly. And... That gets kind of summed up in the final issue. Our protagonist is a white lady. Uh, her name is Naomi. She works as an EMT and she becomes embroiled in a sort of underground plot uh, against the goddess Una or for the goddess Una. We're not very sure throughout most of the run of this particular graphic novel. But essentially she's called to the scene of a shooting uh, of a botanica owner who has been performing miracles. He has been healing people dying of terminal cancer, including the young boy who has now shot him. And while attending the scene, he latches on to Naomi, uh, the botanica owner, who she doesn't really understand. She doesn't speak his language. And he says he, he has to give her a gift and he passes his gift on to her. And he has talked variously throughout the issue that he didn't know the price of the gift. He didn't know what what the implications of what he was doing were and he urges her not to use the gift on the boy who shot him who has himself been gunned down by police however because she's an emt she goes over there and you know tries to save his life through mundane means succeeds and he's taken to hospital where he then goes black-eyed and possessed and kills multiple people before dying himself that's like issue one and from there we see naomi struggling to Kind of come to an understanding of what this power is what she has become embroiled in uh, alongside her are two policemen who are investigating the original shooting uh, and they come to grips with this kind of shady underground doings uh, which involve the local drug trade and various other things and the, the plan that they're trying to put into motion now from my understanding my very limited limited understanding santeria is a blend of old traditions observed by African people before that they were kidnapped and sold into slavery and the Catholicism that many were forced to adopt when they were brought into other countries. So it's those two things kind of mixed together to create a new tradition. That doesn't seem to be what the comic book is describing it as. What they seem to think it is is a strong rejection of all things colonial, all of the things that the colonizers try and do to these people 
and a continuation of their own ways, um, completely uninterrupted. And they are continuing to worship the goddess Una, who they've brought with them. So that kind of goes against some of the things that I read in my strange Google trip. Another thing is the, the animal uh, sacrifice issue, which I, I did Google a little bit about. And this is something that is practiced in Sanjuria and has been many times upheld against uh, attempts to have that shut down because of uh, laws about religious freedom in America. It is said uh, in the things that I've googled that this animal sacrifice is used as a substitute for human sacrifice and it goes to strengthen the particular deity that these sacrifices are offered to. This is an idea that is carried over into the comic book. These sacrifices are used to strengthen Una against disbelief and disempowerment but also a heavy presence of human sacrifice runs through all five issues. Her, the two sons of the priestess who was originally murdered are carrying out vast quantities of human sacrifice uh, in favour of Una. And although some animal sacrifice is shown at the beginning, it is predominantly human, um, which is kind of my main issue in that it seemed that the evil forces, in quote marks, of this series were the practitioners of Santeria, even the botanica owner who was killed, who only wanted to do good things with it, couldn't do good things with it because of the evil nature of the practice that he was working with. And that just seems like the demonization of African religions in a sense that has been done in a lot of other witchcraft fiction, this idea of black magic and voodoo and all that stuff being inherently evil. And this comic book does lean quite heavily into that. But I will say that I felt like some of the other aspects of it were rather on point. The kind of shift that between the goddess being a protectress and a provider and also a horrifying entity of death. Uh, the switch of a button between being honoured properly and not being honoured at all. So the way she protects the people who believe in her, but also exacts bloody vengeance on their behalf. It was an interesting duality to that deity, which was, I felt kind of fed into a lot of things about like Greek myths and other kinds of myths, like pre-Christian deities, essentially, which was, I felt quite authentic. It did seem weird to me that the power of this botanica owner, this priest, was being passed over to a white lady without, you know, initiation, without her having studied anything. Because Santeria, from what I've read, is an initiatory tradition. It's it's closed practice. People don't just get, you know, absorbed into it with, with no prior knowledge or training. This treats it very much like, you know, the Green Lantern Ring or various other things that are just like passed on to the next person by a dying person as a source of power, the, the MacGuffin of the story. And that sort of creates a protagonist. And so I can understand why it's been done for the narrative, but it seemed like a weird choice uh, to do it. We did get some quite harrowing scenes into the lives of the EMTs and the police. Uh, I think in the first issue, they attend a man who has beaten his girlfriend and then tries to murder one of the EMTs. And when they stop him, uh, the girlfriend starts attacking them and, and saying, you know, that, that she's going to sue them for brutalizing her boyfriend. And having worked in the NHS and having like met um, paramedics and heard some of the stories that they have to tell, this seemed right on the money, uh, like people getting attacked while trying to do good things. And again, it was that kind of duality that they're there as healers, but also as authority figures who might not be appreciated. Um, so that was kind of an interesting parallel to be drawn in terms of that character. Also this idea that they have to go out there and save lives, even if the life might not be worth saving. So they save the life of a guy who has committed a, an assault on someone, but they also save the life of a little girl who's been hit by a car but then both become tainted and evil because of the, the evil Santeria powers. I was not a fan of this. Used to like resurrect them. It reminded me of White Noise 2, The Light, which is not a good movie. Uh, but in it, Nathan Fillion, who plays the main character, 
um, sees a light around people who are about to die and he goes about trying to save them only to find out that if you save someone who is meant to die three days later they become evil because of something to do with Jesus I wasn't paying that much attention but it's that same kind of idea that in trying to do the thing that is her calling her duty saving people's lives she's ending other people's lives uh, and it is that kind of balancing act that I thought was very telling of magic, that you do something and then it has unintended consequences. Um, so that was an interesting idea, which I did appreciate, although, again, did not appreciate the fact that it was like using Santeria is just another word for evil magic. I do think the artwork is pretty nice. It's a sort of stylized attempt at realism. I liked how the paramedic sections were in sort of pastel colors there was more effort at realism whereas a lot of the like flashbacks and a lot of the ritual scenes had more uh, of a supernatural kind of exaggeration to them like lots of fire and and stuff like that although again it did kind of emphasize the evil aspect um then it was pretty good artwork i will say having looked for reviews and stuff it seems like this is a very under reviewed a set of issues slash volume on goodreads it has a less than three star review score which i can kind of understand and i'll get into why in a minute um but there were no like real reviews of it in like text terms so i can't really tell if people were to, like put off by the kind of undertones that were being brought in or if it was the actual story that they found unsatisfying so the story, um, as I've already said, involves Naomi coming to grips with her new powers and these seeming like amping up ritual sacrifices in the name of Una towards some big scheme. And to be honest, it feels like between issues five, uh, four and five, they were told, you know how we were going to let you have six more issues? We're not. Sum it all up now. Because issue five feels rushed and like several ideas just come out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, because she's suddenly approached by the son of the priestess who is immortal in the service of Una and he reveals that his whole big plan has been to destroy Una because of the way her power has tainted him and his brother and although they've lived these long lives and they've escaped terrible situations and prospered at what cost ha has that come and he's not comfortable with it and uh, he wants to destroy her but this seems to come out of nowhere because we've been told like he's been spreading this new drug around which essentially like makes people go through a kind of ritual state so they reach Una and become souls for her to control. That's really poorly explained. But now suddenly he's like, oh, actually, I was on the side of good the whole time and I want to destroy her. And it feels like that kind of comes out of nowhere. And Naomi doesn't seem ready to be in this oppositional role to Una by the time they get to the, the final confrontation. It feels like an important step on the hero's journey has been missed because she has accepted the call. She has come to realise that she has these powers, but she hasn't really had to work for them. They just kind of come out of her at random. Whenever she needs to heal someone, she hasn't struggled with you know, working out how to use them. She's never really refused the idea of these powers and, and had to be talked around. And then there's this weird moment where she and her partner in the ambulance are involved in an accident and she is fully taken over by uh, ostensibly Una who kind of blazes out of her and destroys the enemies and says, no harm shall come to this vessel, as if Naomi has some key part to play. And she then makes a move on her partner, like Una does through her body, and declares him as like her consort and that they will one day consummate their relationship. And this will aid the rebirth. She says Naomi is crucial to the rebirth. So that made me think, okay, maybe she wants to be born into human form or have her priestess reborn or something to that effect. It seems like Naomi is going to have to have a child. And yet when we get to the final issue, none of that is mentioned. Although the partner has been taken into this dimension where Una is lording it over the, the souls that she has collected, it isn't mentioned again and she does try to destroy Naomi so it feels very rushed it feels like a lot of things are teased and they're not given a, a satisfactory ending which I found a little bit disappointing I felt like it needed maybe a sixth issue to kind of wrap it up um, but yeah it did feel a little bit kind of hasty and a little bit unfinished 
overall I think it's something that you need to make your own mind up about and definitely something that my opinion on should not be taken as all that because my, again my understanding of Santeria and therefore my ability to look critically at a fictional portrayal of it it is really just not satisfactory like I'm not happy with my own level of knowledge to, to pass judgment on this what I will say is that it's at least different there's a lot of comic books about big titted witches out there I've read quite a lot of them but this is at least something new and different and even if it is unsatisfactory or even maybe offensive to some people in parts it's at least an attempt to, to strike out and do something original uh, which I think should be looked at uh, and you know more people should be aware of because I don't think from what I've seen that it is something that all the people have read or reviewed so definitely check it out I think you can find issues of it just online for free because it's been out for quite a while you can also do what I did and just buy individual issues second hand from ebay or i think there's collected editions floating around out there somewhere but it is definitely worth looking at um i'd encourage you to just read the first issue if you're you know into graphic novels if you're into collecting things that are about different branches of the occult this could be quite a good look for you uh, and just you know make up your own mind about it and go and review it on goodreads because it really does not have enough reviews on that in the meantime, if you have anything else you'd like me to review or to recommend, or if you have read Santeria, the Goddess Kiss, and you'd like to comment on it, do so down below on the YouTube version. Uh, let me know what you think. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.